Alright, what is up guys? It's your boy Zach here coming at you again, aka that bio dude with the coolest, most informative, and funniest AP biology videos you can find on the interweb. There's no better ones, I swear. And uh, today we're talking about body fluid regulation and excretory system. First things first, shout out to Will Johnson for the hat. Left it in my car like last summer. I'm never giving it back, so here we go. All right, excretion and the environment. The particular nitrogen, nitrogenous end product differs among animals according to the environment, but an excretory organ tends to be tubular, as we will see first among invertebrates and then vertebrates. So, like, in the right here picture, we have an example of proteins are broken down to amino acids and then into NH2. And for most fishes and other aquatic animals, they break that down into ammonia. Adult amphibians, sharks, and mammals are break down into urea. Insects, birds, and reptiles break down to uric acid. It just kind of depends on the animal and what they break it down to, but either way, they're going to have to excrete it. All right, excretory organs among invertebrates. Most animals have turb tubular excretory organs that regulate the water-salt balance of the body and excrete metabolic waste into the environment. Here are three examples. Planarians, which are flat earthworms living in fresh water, have two strands of branching excretory tubules that open to the outside of the body excretory pores. Located along the tubules are bulb-like flame cells, each of which contains a cluster of beating cilia that looks like flickering flame under a microscope. These flame cells, these flame cells help propel fluid out. And I'll take a pic look at that right now. So here we go with the planarian up top. There's our little flame cells right there. And here's the two excretory tubules. And then those go all the way out to those excretory pores. You can see these flame cells up top. The nucleus goes through the cilia, out these excretory pores, and that's how they excrete waste. Go back a slide. And earthworms are divided into segments, and nearly every body segment has a pair of excretory structures called nephridia. Each nephridium is a tubule with a ciliated opening excretory pore. Take a look at that. Here's the earthworm. Here we have the capillary network, a tubule, a bladder, a septum, entrance of the nephrocytome, and then, of course, the pore. And this is what I was talking about. You have those nephridiums that allow it to come through all the way out to the pore. A little more advanced, they have the bladder and the capillary network, unlike the planarian does. And then coming back, insects have a unique excretory system consisting of long, thin tubules called malpighion tubules attached to the gut. Uric acid is transported from surrounding fluid into these tubules where absorption occurs and the rest is excreted as waste. All right, osmoregulation among aquatic vertebrates. So aquatic vertebrates use osmoregulation, that is, maintain particular ion concentrations in their blood. Osmoregulation is absolutely essential to maintain homeostasis. Homeostasis, the relative can't consist consistency of the internal environment in general is necessary because few vertebrates have blood that is isotonic to seawater, but that is not so for cartilaginous fish. Cannot pronounce words today, but we're still going to grind it out. Cartilaginous fish, their blood plasma is nearly isotonic to seawater because they pump it full of urea, and this molecule gives their blood the same tonicity as seawater. Marine bo bony fishes, bony fishes must avoid to become dehydrated. To counteract this, they drink seawater almost constantly. The kidneys then conserve the water and produce a scant amount of isotonic urine. Freshwater bony fishes, their problem is exactly the opposite of these marine life fish. They get too much water, so they almost never drink this water. They eliminate excess water by producing large quantities of hypotonic urine. And then in humans, our urinary system is pretty simple. You have the kidneys that produce the urine, the ureters here, these long strands that transport the urine. The urinary bladder stores the urine, see right here, and then the urethra passes urine to the outside. Some important arteries and veins, the renal artery and the renal vein is what connects from the renal vein, comes from the superior vena cava to the kidneys, and then the renal artery comes from the aorta. All right, nephrons and blood supply. Here's a couple pictures here on the left. You have the, here's the gross anatomy of a kidney right there. You have the ureter, and then you have your kidneys broken into three parts, renal cortex, renal medulla, 
and renal pyramid. So those are three parts. And then you have the renal artery and vein that connect to it. And this is where filtration is going to occur. And then a deeper look down, you see the renal cortex, renal medulla, and then also the renal pelvis. And you, inside there, you're going to have collecting ducts and nephrons, big part of filtration to get the excretory system going. And on the right is an even more detailed look at what happens in the renal cortex. You have a lot of stuff going on. The renal artery and vein come in. The renal vein, you know, the renal artery is what starts it. It's going to bring in the efferent arteriole into the glomerulus, a.k.a. the Bauman's capsule is what holds it all in there. That then it goes to the proximal convoluted tube, into the distal convoluted tube, keeps going through this capillary network, eventually coming up through the venule into the renal vein, back to the ureter, boom. All right, the urine formation, the three main processes in urine formation are glomerular formation, tubular reabsorption, and tubular secretion. A little bit about both. Glomerular filtration, water, salts, nutrient molecules, and waste molecules move from the glomerulus to the inside of the glomerular capsule. These small molecules are called glomerular nitrate. And then in the tubular reabsorption, into the particular tubular capillary network and water flows passively and then tubular secretion certain molecules aka hydrogen and penicillin are actively secreted from the pertubular capillary network into the convoluted <laughs> tubes same pathway is used as it goes through there all right the kidneys and homeostasis the kidneys are organs of homeostasis for four main reasons they excrete metabolic waste such as urea which is the primary nitrogenous waste of humans they maintain water balance maintain the acid-base balance, and therefore the pH value, and of course, they secrete hormones. We already hit on one, two, and three. Last one to talk about is four. And one thing I want to talk about with the secreting hormones is renin, which is a hormone, is an enzyme that changes proteins from the liver, which then promotes... Al no, wait. Renin is an enzyme, okay? is an enzyme that changes proteins from the liver, which then promotes aldosterone, which is a hormone that excretes potassium ions, which is very important to the respiratory system and body food regulation. That was a quick one. That's all we're going to talk about the body through regulation, excretory system. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe as usual. Maybe throw a funny comment on there. Whatever you feel like doing. See you next video.